okay, as promised, um, probably the most controversial thing I'll make yet, but we're going to talk about gun cleaning. So I'll try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. Um, there's actually not a lot to this, but uh, this is what I do. Now, I'll just say it up front, if this doesn't work for you, you don't like this method, don't do it. It's pretty simple. So, um, first, obviously, make sure everything's unloaded. Bolts out of the gun. Ammo's over there. Um, so let's talk real quick about the chemicals that we use. So, there is Tetragun. And I'll explain how each how I use each of these. Um, there's stuff called Wipeout. It's a brushless bore cleaner, and I, I like this stuff a lot. But it's really hard to find. That's my only complaint about it. Uh, the next stuff is Hoppy's Number no. Nine foaming bore cleaner. No need for brushes or anything either. Um, Rem oil. I like that stuff. Works good. And Though we're not using this today, I thought I'd show it to you. Fluid film, rust and corrosion protector, and this stuff works really, really well um, for shotguns, especially if you're anywhere near salt water. This is marine grade. And if you put a coating of that stuff on, on your barrel or, or any metal surface at all, you can literally submerge it in salt water and pull it out a half an hour later, let it sit, and that stuff will protect it. So it's really good stuff. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I'll also leave affiliate links to any of the, any, any of these products here I can find a link to. I already checked for a link today to, to trying to find this because this is almost gone. And I, again, I can't find it. Uh, so I'm sure the minute I post this, it'll be available everywhere. Um, but probably my favorite, my go-to, is the Hoppies number 9. And the reason I like this is because I don't ever almost never use a brush on any of my guns. Uh, if I'm shooting a lot of lead uh, in p pistol matches and things like that, um, I will I will use a nylon brush, the nylon brush that Glock uh, sends with these. So I guess first things first, let's uh, let's break this down. Get the barrel out of it. Now, it's always good to have a rag or something up, set up here, um, just so you're, because this foaming stuff, it's gonna, it, it's really, it's like expanding construction foam. It, it really goes everywhere. So, give this a quick shake. All you wanna do is just push some in there till it comes out, and it's gonna just really expand. All we're going to do is let this sit. So at the same time, I'm going to get a paper towel. I'm going to shove some of this stuff down, down the bore here. I'm going to take a paper towel and just put it up here in the action. Um, but I'm not going to plug the, the the ports here on the side, so I'll know when that that thing is full. I'm just trying to stop it from getting down in, into the magwell here. So. We'll just hold this right on the end of the barrel and make a mess. There she blows. Come take a look at this. So this is why I plug this off here. Um, get a paper towel and just wipe this. This stuff, it's been my experience at least that it hasn't uh, discolored anything. It's uh, pretty harmless on finishes. Just want to clean that up on both sides. I'm sure it's everywhere. So a little bit more in-depth look here. Um, I personally really like the Otis kit. Um, it says Otis here, but yet sold by Cabela's. So it is Otis. Um, now with the Otis kit, this particular one here, you get a small cable for 17 you get a pistol cable and of course all these the little patch brush attachments and all that stuff they all come in here so um, and then of course you get your cable for rifles or shotguns 
which I've got here. So I've already got my little patch eye on there now. Um, I just get some good quality patches here uh, because this is a 243 rifle we're going to be cutting these down we'll cut them in half so you'll need a pair of scissors for that um, this tetra gun here uh, is really good the only place I use this stuff here is on my bolt lugs uh, I put just a little bit underneath each side and that just helps keep this thing closing just just like butter it's really nice um, now the Hoppies number nine foaming bore cleaner. Uh, you do not have to. Um, you don't have to use a brush for this. In fact, it says it says wait uh, 15 to 30 minutes to clean. Uh, use a Hoppies cleaning rod and patch to remove from barrel to uh, to remove the foam from the barrel. Uh, this deteriorates copper and any nitro fouling, and you don't really get lead buildup or anything. Uh, shooting jacketed bullets so I'm not really concerned about that but the copper fouling I, I can be now that being said uh, let's talk about a little something different here so I certainly didn't invent the method of cleaning that I'm using uh, if you look up to Borosaurus Rex I'll leave a link to his channel below and he talks about the importance of uh, of a foul barrel and not over cleaning and what that does to bullet speeds and muzzle velocities right so and so I put that to the test a few years back, and it's it's absolutely spot on. Um, the less I clean my guns, um, the more uh, the more consistent muzzle velocity I get that I can count on. Um, now, a couple of my guns, a couple of my rifles won't even shoot a group until I get actually quite a few rounds through them, and then the the group pattern just really starts to tighten up, and and then just starts you know driving tacks, and at some point. That group goes from this and it starts to open back up again and that's the indication to me that it's time to clean that barrel and uh, but I've got you know hundreds of rounds through a barrel and never cleaned it uh, now don't get me wrong I pull the bolt I look through there you know I make sure that I don't see anything funky going on I do it almost every time I go to the range um, every once in a while I'll just pull a patch through it uh, with just a tiny bit of rem oil on the patch and just you know just to stop any potential corrosion from happening now of course as soon as you pull the trigger that oil's gone it's burned up so um, but I, I, I do that once in a while um, especially if I'm out shooting in uh, in inclement weather where it's raining or, or it's uh, really really moist or there's a lot of fog and stuff up in the up in the mountains so but uh, please look into what uh, what Rex had to say about that because it, it is there's a lot of truth to that and I also he's got a, a muzzle velocity curve chart it's on an Excel spreadsheet and uh, I plugged in those numbers based on a fouled barrel and and charted those and he was the calculations are only off by a couple feet per second this way or that way it's really really close so I'm certainly not taking all the credit for this um, but it, it does it works it works very well um, again I, I almost never run a patch through the barrel now, with the exception of the Glock, uh, the factory Glock nylon brush here, uh, I will run this if I've been shooting lead. And I typically shoot lead uh, at a lot of the pistol competitions and stuff like that. So uh, lead can get a little bit built up in the barrels. Now, I, do, uh, I don't shoot lead through the factory Glock barrel. I have a lone wolf barrel that I put in my, in my competition pistol uh, to shoot competition. Um, shooting lead through Glock barrel is not recommended at all so uh, the lead can start to build up and just actually start to choke the barrel down and then you wind up with a big spike in pressure and a, a potentially a very serious problem so um, just just thought I'd throw that out there anyways um, so that it's really it's pretty basic I spray the stuff in I let it sit for about 30 minutes and I I've just pull several patches through it I'm gonna we're gonna wipe that out um, the last thing I do is I'll take a little bit of rem oil on a patch pull that through a couple times and then several several uh, dry patches and that's it so um, you know, and it's always nice to have some gloves handy too because just some just some large just some work gloves here so you don't get all the chemicals all over your hands um, again 
I haven't had any problems with this uh, staining anything. I suppose if you had some raw wood uh, or something like that, on a, like a stock that had not a very good finish on it, this may, it, it could, I suppose, potentially stain it or whatever. So you might want to just test a spot first just to see. But everything that I shoot, um, no problem at all. Um, the wipeout is the same way. Uh, this stuff is, it's also very good. Uh, this one here is a minimum, you have to let it sit a minimum of 60 minutes and up to overnight. Uh, and so um, it's not quite as fast acting as uh, as the hoppies, but it works very well. So, um, and I like, what I like about this is this little cone here. You can get that cupped around the end of the barrel and this nozzles up in there. So it doesn't make quite quite the mess that the, uh, that the this this design does. This just makes a mess and oh well. Um, the other thing I do, I guess while we're sitting here letting that stuff uh, do its magic, is uh, I'll take just a little bit of rem oil and I spray just a little, just a very very light coat of rem oil on my bolts and I'll just take a paper towel and just wipe it down really good so it, it has a little bit of a film on it. You're, you can kind of feel it but it's not, uh, it certainly isn't dripping with oil um, and it's, uh, it's just enough to, you know, if it's raining or, or whatever, you get some water splashed on it, it's not going to start rusting the bolt away. It's just enough protection to, to keep it nice and, and clean and, and uh, well lubed. Uh, the only time I, I, I put just a little bit of oil, I'll spray some oil up into this area here uh, just because of the actuating of the bolt here and the firing of it. Um, I try not to get too much down inside here uh, because you can get yourself in a situation where you get a hang fire uh, or a misfire. It's too much oil in there. So, Well, let's uh, finish letting this sit here and we'll be back in just a second. We'll get this wiped out. So what I do is I'll just take a couple patches here and I'll just cut a couple of them in half and grab my little cable here. One thing I like about the Otis kit too is I, I keep it with me, I keep it in my pack. You know, if I accidentally got something, um, you know, dirt in my barrel or some, something unfortunate like that were to happen out in the field, I can just take this thing now. One thing I like to do is everything I do in my barrel starts at this end and goes out that end. I never pull it the other direction. I keep everything going the same way. Um, one reason is, is if there's a bunch of garbage in this barrel, I don't want to pull it back into my action. I want to keep it going out that way. So let me slip my gloves on too, because, okay. You're going to want a piece of paper towel too, because when you shove this through there, um, you're going to wind up with, this thing's going to see the, coming out the end of the barrel there. Uh, this thing's going to be just soft and wet with, with cleaner. I just kind of slide that down there and yeah, it's actually not that bad. It's fairly clean. This uh, this rifle here hasn't been shot much uh, recently since it was last cleaned. Um, just haven't had the time to get this particular rifle out much, but nonetheless, I wanted to make sure that I fulfilled the request. Had a lot of requests to do uh, the gun cleaning thing, so here we are doing it. So I'll uh, I'll pull about three to four patches through this thing. coming out pretty clean now so the next thing I'll do is I'll take a patch and I'll put just a little bit of rim oil on here not much just a little bit I don't want it dripping off of there or anything just just a very light coat another thing that uh, when you're pulling this out try to make sure that you're not you're pulling it straight out of the barrel and you're not coming this way or coming this way or anything weird you don't want to drag this thing at a hard angle across the crown here um, over time that can 
have a uh, detrimental effect on accuracy. So just pull it straight out nice and smooth and easy. Now we're going to pull this dry patch through a couple times. And that came out pretty darn clean. There's just a tiny bit of carbon still left on there. A little dirt. That's okay. I'll take this and put the patch through a different direction here. We'll pull it through again. Just like that. There we go. Okay, that's cleaned up. Now, I'll take a paper towel, nice clean dry one, and I'll just kind of twist this up a little bit, like so. And we'll just take this and sort of stuff it up in the action here a little ways, just to try to get any residual uh, cleaner that might be up there. Another thing I do is I always, I always throw some Q-tips in my Otis kit. Take a couple of these and just run them up inside the action here, swirl them around um, just to make sure that you're not, uh, you don't have a bunch of cleaner sitting down inside there. Wipe the rails off where the uh, bolt lugs ride. Now I don't get into my into the action uh, the trigger assembly in the gun about once a year. Uh, about once a year I'll pull this apart here and uh, you know clean clean up all the trigger assemblies and and all that. But there's not really a need to for for what we're doing here. So just take this Q-tip and just kind of work it around in there. Make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies in there, get that all cleaned out. And it's not too bad. Pretty clean, really. Okay, so move the camera back just a little ways here. And let's clean up the uh, the Glock barrel. I'm going to mess of stuff here, but... So, if you're going to... If you're going to brush the barrel I only recommend using a nylon brush. Using a metal brush on metal will leave scratches. Uh, though they may be very, very small, it's going to scratch it. And why would you want to induce any more uh, wear inside that barrel than you absolutely have to? You know, bullets flying down that thing at 3,200 feet a second, uh, that's, that's enough wear in itself. So we'll just keep patching this thing here. Just spin that around a little bit. And again, I'm only going the same direction. I never go the other way. So these are kind of handy. You can just drop them and pull them right through several times. Wipe the outside down. Just make sure we get all that cleaner out of there. Just any areas that you have, and using a high quality uh, paper towel is a good thing because this, th these particular paper towels I have, they don't leave a bunch of lint everywhere. Um, I don't like a bunch of lint everywhere. So, and then the same thing here. We're going to take this, take a nice clean patch, and we're going to put a little bit of rim oil on it. Not a lot, just again, just a, just a little bit, and. Drop that through. Pull that through several times. It's coming out eh, just a little bit of dirt on there. It's not bad. And then a dry patch. Now you can get the standard Otis patches if you want. They're they're very nice. I do like them. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find at any of my local stores the uh, patches, the smaller patches for smaller caliber stuff. I do have some of the bigger ones, but boy, that is just, I wish you could see through there. Maybe you can. 
just shiny, shiny clean. And that is all dry, no residue, nice and clean. This is a compensated barrel too, by the way, just in case you saw the uh, funny holes up inside right there. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. It's um, you know it's it's pretty it's pretty cut and dry how how I do it. Um, I will show you here real quick with the Tetra gun. So on a Savage, uh, because it's it's got this extra piece in here, what I like to do is I'll slide that off and I'll put off to one side and I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease come on out of there right there just a just a dab of grease there and then a dab of grease on the leading side on both of these lugs here and I'll just swipe them with my finger just to get a little bit of smearing across across there and then I'll, sometimes I'll just take what's that little bit that's left over and just kind of wipe it down like so. It's kind of a white grease, um, but it works pretty good. And then I give it just one kind of a final little uh, brush off there like so. Now what I'll do is I'll take just a very, very light coat of oil here, just a little bit on there like so. And I'll just kind of wipe that around, get that all over this thing here. Grab a paper towel and now you still got, even though you're wiping the oil off, there's still a coating of oil on here. And I can still see plenty of oil down inside here. It's still fairly wet looking. Um, so I'm not going to put any oil down in there. Last thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> right here on the bottom side, I'm going to put just a little bit of grease right there and want some on this side right here smear that around so it looks like that now that's going to go up in here and that rides on those on, on your rails sort of in the action so and oh, just just like butter nice and super smooth just just really really smooth no grit no nothing very nice i like that so, um, so that's it. Uh, you know, again, if, if you have methods that work better for you, by all means, um, use them. Um, this, this is what works for me. I do highly, highly recommend that you check out uh, Taborosaurus Rex's channel uh, and, and look up the, um, the, 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 the copper fouling. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to the specific video, actually. That'll be easier for you. So, I guess that wraps up... Uh, this week's uh, little video, but uh, do have some more stuff come up in the future. Uh, I was hoping to get out this weekend, but unfortunately we had some inmates escape uh, up in some local hills where I was out bear scouting this morning and was going to do some long range shooting, but uh, too many law enforcement running around the woods trying to catch those guys. Um, so I uh, got a little uh, little challenge coming up uh, with the Social Regressive and MRAD over in Ireland. We're going to do a uh, well, they, they've already been doing it. Uh, I'm going to jump in on this because it looks fun. Uh, shooting six eggs with sh six shots, I believe, at 300 yards. Um, that sounds like a good time. So, of course, any shooting sounds like a good time. So, anyways, hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. More importantly, share it. And uh, we'll see you probably in about a week. Enjoy.